How's it going, everyone? Uh, just made it up to the one steep bit of climbing I had to do. And uh, now we're kind of in a little more level terrain. And uh, I'll be able to talk a little easier. So today I'm out looking for uh, mountain goats. And the reason I'm out here today, a couple things going on. One, it's uh, end of October, early November. So their coats, their winter coats are starting to come in and they're just big, beautiful, white, shaggy coats and they're gorgeous to photograph. Um, also, it's, uh, we're still in the rut in the mating season and, uh, and the big billy goats start popping out. You know, all summer long, we'll see the ewes and the kits and we'll see them quite a bit, but the big billy goats, we don't see that much until this time of year, they start coming around. Um, so that's what we're looking for today. So far, I haven't seen any, uh, which is kind of weird. I'm usually batting at about a thousand uh, up here in this area, but uh, we're gonna keep walking around and hiking around and look for them. Uh, the other thing I was gonna show you guys today was my new backpack. Um, this is the, uh, the Mindshift Backlight Elite 45 liter pack. And uh, it's not my first one, it's actually my second one of these packs. I have another one that I've been using, used all last winter for ski photography. And uh, it was awesome. I just got this one in uh, yesterday, two days ago, recently. Um, so I'm gonna use it, I'll probably purpose it slightly different than I did the other one. The other one I used, like I said, entirely for backcountry skiing. This one I think I might use more for landscape and wildlife, we'll see. Um, but I'll walk you guys through it and let you guys check out the pack here uh, in a minute as well. Well, no luck in this area, um, which is a bummer. It's a really great spot to photograph the mountain goats, but uh, but I think we'll move down a little bit and go into a slightly different little area and uh, see if we can't find them there. And if we don't find any today, that's all right. Still got something to talk to you about. Still want to show you my pack here. And uh, yeah, we'll check that out. But uh, hopefully find some goats. And if we don't, maybe we'll go out tomorrow nice and early and uh, see if we can't find them somewhere else. We'll see. All right, so yeah, <clears throat> new pack day. Uh, Mindshift Backlight Elite 45 liter. This is it right here. Um, like I said earlier, I have been using this pack. I used it all last year as my backcountry ski pack and it was awesome. Um, I got a new one that um, I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna set up. Uh, I might use it for ski, I might use it for landscape and wildlife. Um, but yeah, I was gonna go through a couple things. Uh, first off, one of the things I really like about it is this rubberized bottom right here, it keeps your gear uh, dry when you're, you know, outdoor photographers. We're in the mud, the snow, the slush, the ice, what have you, and this helps keep your gear dry when you're uh, when you got your pack down in in the elements um, it's a big pack 45 liters but uh but it carries really well as you guys saw me hiking around in the mountains here it carries just fine it carries a, a big load uh beautifully so in here today again i was trying to look for some well trying to find some mountain goats i should say and we didn't but um what i have with me today is the sigma the 150 600 which is a pretty sizable lens and uh yeah the fits just perfect in here it just slides poof, drops right in with the body on it i even have room for other lenses i have room for cleaning gear some of the gopro gear um, and all that kind of stuff it does have a waterproof zipper all the way around here which you know i'm i'm not the biggest waterproof zipper guy if the pack itself isn't waterproof what's the point of having having a waterproof zipper um i'm not a thousand percent sure on that i would just as soon see this be a real fast um zip, 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 big ykk zipper there but so it goes it works fine um what else it does have for landscape and wildlife guys you do have this tripod flap that just kind of tucks up in here when you don't need it and your tripod, as you guys probably saw me hiking around earlier, drops in here, clips right here. If you're not using these clips, they just kind of stow away in here. Um, what else? 
This does have good room for extra layers. Uh, you know, the original outdoor photo packs always cracked me up because they were great for hauling your camera gear, but you really had no room for anything else. And the, these new packs are awesome. I have room for food. I've got my water down here. Um, put that aside. I also have room for extra layers. I got a down jacket and a hat in here. And this pack is also, um, you can also make this, well, I'll just show you. Right here, this opens up and right now it's all set up for camera gear. But when I, they also have a smaller insert, it's about half this size, so I can fit all my backcountry gear in here as well. So climbing skins, uh, more clothing, more food, all would fit right here. Right now I don't have it set up that way, but um, know that you can set it up so that there's slightly less room for camera gear and more room for all your outdoor gear. Um, other things going on, uh, it does have ice axe loops right here, which I used quite a bit last year. In fact, right behind me here, these peaks behind us, I skied those a lot last spring and uh, we did use crampons and ice axe for all that stuff. So I did use these little guys here. You also have another little pouch right in there to stuff additional gear, maps and whatnot, headlamps, all that kind of stuff right here. Oh, and then of course the whole top flap too. Um, which is pretty handy to have as well. And you can take this off if you don't want to use it. You can just totally get rid of it. Um, I'm using it today, um, but just additional storage right here. So yeah, this is the pack I've been using and continue to use. It's a really nice photo pack for the outdoor photographer. And uh, yeah, I would definitely recommend it. Um, if anyone has any questions, uh, just hit me in the comments below. Happy to answer any of your questions. here way up in the alpine and uh took a while to find the goats this morning but i did find them good news is they're right up here right above us uh the bad news is that it's pretty gnarly scree pile between myself and them but not too bad probably had worse um you're not gonna be able to see them on the gopro but they're probably a good probably 800 feet above me um, it does look like there are probably one, if not two, billy goats up there, so I'm pretty excited about that. Um, they're already very well aware of my presence here. They've been checking me out. So the way I approach this is very slowly, very cautiously, just kind of move a little bit of a time. They'll probably get used to me. Um, the goats up here are very tolerant of people. Um, but that said, I'm not going to be getting that close. Uh, for gear today, I did switch it up a little bit. I switched it over to the 100-400 DGDN because it's lighter and smaller, and I knew I'd be scrambling through some uh, some heavy or a bunch of rocks, rock fall scree, um, and it's just a much lighter, easier lens to travel around in the Alpine with. So that's why I brought that. Um, anyhow, let's get moving up this slope and uh, see if we can get a couple go for this today. gotten up to the goats here and there's like a little nanny goat a couple of views here Whew. it's very windy um, I'll see if you can see them they're about a hundred feet away just over there in the rocks there's another guy down there and uh, they're not concerned about me at all they're just sitting here eating and having a nice little morning breakfast I'm gonna fire off a few frames um, and uh, yeah see what we can get um, I'm using, a, like I said, I've got the 100-400 here. Oh, this guy's coming up. 
let's see. Um, the 100-400 on the Sony A92. I'm using uh, continuous autofocus, and I'm using the uh, uh, the eye detect for animal, which is pretty cool that this camera has. So it locks onto the eye of the mountain goats and uh, follows them around. It's really handy. So I'm gonna keep shooting here, see what I can get. Okay, well that was a really good session we just had with the mountain goats there. Um, super fun. Uh, that big billy goat, well, I thought he was small to start, but he turned out to be a pretty big billy goat. Um, and I had hunkered down into a good little spot and I was shooting him with the 100-400, so I had plenty of working distance. But at one point he kind of circled up on me and got pretty close, probably 40-ish, yeah, 50-ish feet, which is a little closer than I'd like him to be. Um, he didn't seem concerned in any way. He was just more inquisitive, I think, than anything. But, uh, yeah, I got some great shots of him with a blue sky background, and then he kind of moved back down, and I got some more shots of him against the, uh, the peaks in the background. It was just really beautiful. And it's just uh, really awesome to be up here in the Alpine with the mountain goats. It was a really fantastic morning, to be honest with you. Um, so now I'm going to pack all this gear up and head back down the mountain. Um, it's really loose and filled with scree and it's going to be kind of a challenging descent. So I'm going to take my time and go nice and slow. 